Good morning. It is a beautiful Sunday morning. The sun is shining like crazy. And this is, oh, I already forgot something. And this is why I decided to put this new flock out on pasture, even though it's just the beginning of March. So their second night, they did end up having some snow and that wasn't fun for them. They had no idea what to do with that. And they didn't know how to go back in the coop. So they were kind of sitting there all cold and I had to go around and pick them all up and put them back in the coop. But it's about persistence. Every night coming out here, putting them back in the coop. Last night, by the time we got home, it was plenty dark. And there was only six chickens out of the 58, I think, that are out here that didn't go back in the coop. Now there was a rooster running around the outside of the fence yesterday that I couldn't catch. And I couldn't find him last night. And there he is, this morning, trying to get back in the net. So we're gonna catch him real quick. But that's something I wanted to touch on. These chickens, the American breast chicken, are not something that wanna be locked up. They hate being locked up. They like to free range, they like to run. And with that being said, their natural instinct to hide from predators and keep themselves safe is incredible, especially the roosters. I've had some roosters get out that I couldn't catch and survive all summer, sleeping in trees, sleeping in bushes. It's, it's incredible what they can survive through and their natural instinct to keep themselves safe. It's not like a normal chicken where they get picked off the same night. Now I know, I know some of you will say, well, I have bobcats and all this crazy stuff. And no, I don't have all that. We have raccoons and hawks and coyotes and, and possums don't really touch them. Skunks don't really touch them. But so we had, we do have predators, but no, it's not as bad as what some of you guys have it. And we have, a high tensile fence that goes around. So it, it isn't as bad, but I'm telling you, other breeds that I've had, if they didn't go in the coop, they would get picked off. And Cornish crosses especially, I mean, but they're, they don't even try to live, I feel like. Anyways, we're gonna get this guy and get him back in there. He's a pretty nice rooster. I don't like how, I don't really love how big his comb is. His feet could be darker, but are pretty dark. He's got beautiful white earlobes. He's got some feathers sticking up around his comb, which I don't love. Pretty good width, not nothing massive. Their tail feathers um, are never impressive when they come out of a brooder. You know what I mean? They're living, living inside on deep bedding. Their tail feathers don't ever look that great. Especially there's way too many chickens in that pen, more than I would like, so. So if you look, his comb is a lot bigger than I'd like it to be. His earlobes are super nice, super white. And he's beefy, definitely wide. He's got some nice blue legs. They're not, a, they're not the darkest blue legs I've ever seen, but they're nice, clean blue legs. Toes are spread out good. He's got a decent amount of width when he walks, so. He's a good one to have in the flock breeding. Hey, come on. For now, he's a good one to have in the flock breeding. I don't like how his feathers stick up there at the top, but. He 
can see he's, they were fighting when they were inside. Now they've figured it all out a lot less, a lot less roosters to fight with, but we'll go ahead and throw them back in there. So like I had mentioned in a different video, so this is parent stock. These are chickens that are going to make um, more American breast chickens that I'll hatch out and sell to you guys. As the summer goes on, I'll pick out the better hens, the better roosters, and they'll go into the chicken tractors that will hold about 10 hens, one rooster, and those will be the grandparent stock. I'll hatch out those eggs and those will make more parent stock to make more flocks to hatch eggs out of. So that's just kind of the breeding program I got going on right now. We're doing the spiral mating system so roosters will then cross over and breed the next group. That just keeps the best genetic diversity going on. I also this year want to play around with doing some single mating and trying to keep, trying to come up with a way to keep more roosters around so I have more options. Sometimes they mature a little different and you wish that you didn't get rid of them. So I'm trying to come up with a way to keep roosters in single pens out on pasture and not have it take all day to move them. So that's something I have in the works right now. And my idea there is <clears throat> if I can come up with something that I can keep roosters in single pens and you know maybe they're not all around a good rooster maybe they've got something wrong with them which they all do but maybe they have a really strong trait maybe their legs are super blue or or their earlobes are super white or they have great width but need help somewhere else so then I can find a hen that matches them in the opposite way and keep a hen in with them so that way they're not a lonely and B, I can play around with different breedings and see what kind of chicks I can get from that and see how they fit back into the breeding program. You gotta be careful because you gotta do all of this along with still keeping in your spiral mating system. And just like I talked before about how if you hyper-focus on one thing, you will end up breeding out stuff that you didn't intend to or breeding in stuff you didn't intend to so it's definitely something you got to take slowly something you got to be careful with um, I think for the majority breeding in groups or pens is definitely a better way to go because you're not hyper focusing on one thing but I think breeding in singles as a way to try to breed in certain things that you really like and want to go with. It'll also be a way to look better at egg production, which is something I've always wanted to focus more on. Um, egg production is a funny thing. Honestly, they, honestly, you're automatically breeding for egg production in a group setting because the hen that lays the most eggs is gonna get the most chicks out there going. I mean, unless all of her chicks happen to be junk and get called, she's gonna be putting more chicks back into the flock and likely those chicks will produce more eggs like she did. So you're automatically breeding for egg production, but that is something I wanna focus on a little more and I wanna focus more on egg color. Um, which that's pretty easy to do. You just don't hatch the eggs that are darker. Traditionally speaking, breast chickens from breast France are supposed to have white eggs. Over here, our American breast chickens have tinted eggs or even some are a little darker than what I would call tinted. Oh, that's funny. Look at that. An old dust bath. There's an egg in it. You know, look at this, this is a this is a pullet egg, obviously from one that got out over the last couple of days. And I mean, I would say that's a pretty good color right there. I don't, honestly, I don't want to breed 
my hens to have white eggs. I think white eggs are boring. But a tinted egg would be great. I clearly don't want them to have brown eggs. Some of them do. Some of them lay darker eggs. I mean, to lock these genetics in completely are, is going to take a lot of years. But this is the first step, is managing them and breeding them the proper way, having records, keeping track of it. And uh, breeding chickens is not a science. I don't care what people tell you. You can have all the records you want. You can do all the paperwork, do all the research. But breeding any animal is an art. It's an art form. Breeding show pigs when I did that is an art form. These people that are good at it, these people that have a knack for it, a lot of times can't explain to you exactly what they did to get there. It's just something that comes natural to them and it's hard for them to teach other people. It is an art form. It is hard to teach. This is day four of these hens being out on pasture. That is a, I think it's a 25, it's a 30, 30 pound feeder. And they haven't even finished it. I put that out there yesterday and they haven't even finished it yet. So 30 pound, 25, 30 pounds is about what they should be eating while they're out on pasture. You don't, you gotta be careful giving them all they can eat. I've done that in the past, I'll be honest. Um, but I definitely, something I wanna start watching more now. Cause I mean, these pullets coming out of that barn were super fat. And that's gonna help them the next couple weeks as they acclimate to being outside, to running around. They're not gonna get as much food as they were eating um, when they were in the barn, having it in their own comfort because the food was right where it always was and it was comfortable to them. But now they're still trying to figure everything out. Everything's new, everything's scary. So I'm sure they'll drop a little weight from that. And once we get them going, I gotta calculate it back out, but I'm pretty sure for these 58 hens, you wanna give them a third pound a day. So you're looking at about 30 pounds of food, um, especially out on pasture, that's plenty. Uh, obviously, you know, you got to watch the chickens, you know, and with chickens, you got to pick them up and feel them. But I think that's a darn good start to go off from. You can see they don't, today's a nice, beautiful, sunny day, and they don't even know what to do with it. They're hiding under the coop. So I got to move it more often because they're pooping under there, and now they're hiding under there. They're probably too hot. Probably don't know what to do in the sun, but I'm gonna go feed some chickens up at Miggy's and get back to editing. I'll catch you guys later.